NASA's Hubble Space Telescope spied many of the bright spots years ago but the observations from NASA's Dawn spacecraft, which began looping around Ceres on 6 March are the first taken at close range. The images were released on 13 April in Vienna at a meeting of the European Geosciences Union. Scientists say that the bright spots might be related to ice exposed at the bottom of impact craters or some type of active geological features. The areas glimmer tantalizingly in a new full-color map of Ceres. It was obtained in February but not released until the conference. The map uses false colors to tease out subtle differences on the otherwise dark surface of Ceres. This is the first idea of what the surface looks like, said Martin Hoffman, a Dawn scientist from the Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research in Gtingen, Germany. The Dawn spacecraft's view of the bright regions is sharpening as it gets closer to Ceres. The new infrared images reveal differences between spot 1 near Ceres' equator and a pair of bright spots collectively known as spot 5. Some scientists have speculated that the latter could be an icy plume. Spot 1 seems darker than its surroundings and images from Dawn's infrared spectrometer said Federico Tosi, a Dawn scientist at the Institute for Space Astrophysics and Planetology and the Italian National Institute for Astrophysics in Rome. This suggests that the area is cooler than the rest of the dwarf planet surface supporting the theory that the spot is made of ice but for some reason, spot 5 the brightest feature seen on Ceres does not show up in the infrared images. One possibility is that we still don't have enough resolution to see it in the proper way said Tosi Don has also shown that some parts of Ceres are pockmarked by impact craters while other regions seem smooth. So far. There seem to be fewer large craters on Ceres than expected, says the mission's principal investigator Christopher Russell of the University of California Los Angeles at nearly 1,000 kilometers across. Ceres is the biggest object in the asteroid belt, which lies between Mars and Jupiter. Researchers expect that a close look at the surface of Ceres will reveal clues about the formation of protoplanets in the early solar system 4, 5 billion years ago. Even at this distance the images show complex craters and long deep curving features that hint at a violent past Hoffman said Dawn has been traveling toward Ceres since its 2007 launch with a site visit to the asteroid Vesta in 2011 the spacecraft was technically captured by Ceres S gravity on 6 March but has taken weeks to approach the dwarf planet Dawn produced another set of images on 10 April but only a small fraction of Ceres' S surface was illuminated at the time and mission scientists have not yet released the pictures. The spacecraft will begin detailed science investigations on 23 April after it settles into permanent orbit around Ceres. Theories, series, theories, mysteries, and conspiracies. I had a feeling that this story would eventually heat up. And ladies and gentlemen, the steam is rising. People are reporting that Ceres is shooting water volcanoes into space. Astronomers are asking, did that planet toy just turn into a comet? That sounds cool. Dirty snowball dwarf planet. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to one of the core stories of Thor News Year 2. 2014, baby. There's a place between Mars and Jupiter, a giant gap, if you will, called the asteroid belt. Some people think a planet or planets used to be there. They got smashed by some other planet. So now all that's left is their debris. Although in that debris is Ceres, the very first asteroid ever found and was referred to as a planet for hundreds of years. Hey, Vesta, giant planet core. I got a lot of theories. 
There are quite a few mysteries surrounding her. There's a hell of a history. And guess what? Yes, there are conspiracies. I have quite a few of my own. About eight months ago, I gave a preview of, of what would come this year when I did my first story on Ceres. Blew my mind, really. So much so that I didn't talk about it until now. That everybody's talking about it. I feel kind of safe. I asked me another one of them important dumb questions. Why haven't you taken a photograph of Ceres since 2004? And can you rack focus on the Hubble? It's like there's a focus ring. Like if it isn't focused, it'll look blurry just like this photograph. So that's why we're here. This is recap number one. Now let's have some fun. Let's go to town. Man, I tell you what. Ceres is a planet in our inner solar system. And it probably has life. Ceres. Now lift your skirt and cough, protoplanet. Oh, baby. You sure are special. How special is she? She is the only dwarf planet in our inner solar system. She is such a mystery. Hidden is her history. So special, she is one of the number one candidates in our solar system to harbor extraterrestrial life. It's so special. It's got more fresh water than planet Earth. So special, they haven't taken a new photograph of her since 2004. So special, I've started a new series about her. All right, there's a lot of weirdness around this planet. Asteroid, dwarf planet, planetoid. How special is she? The largest asteroid known to mankind. Asterisk. That asterisk is a discussion for a whole nother video. Man, the more I learn, the more I don't know. The more I have to learn. Crazy how that works. Series. It's a big water, ice, rock body estimated at 950 kilometers or 590 miles in diameter. So at this point, I gotta say, all the data is a bit, something is rotten in Denmark. It was discovered in January 1st, 1801 by Giuseppe Piazzi. It was the first asteroid asterisk ever to be identified. But at first it was classified as a planet. And then here's the deal. I went to look up when it became declassified from planet to asteroid. And I couldn't find that information, which was pretty bizarre. So it's like, they don't want us talking about Ceres at all. It says the Syrian surface is probably a mixture of water, ice. That sounds like life. Various hydrated minerals such as carbonates. That sounds like life. And clays. That sounds like life too. Sounds like a lot of life. Maybe that's why they named her after the goddess of plants, harvest, motherly love, growth, and the environment. Because it has a lot of plants, growth, environment, atmosphere, and motherly love. Why are they not taking a photograph of it for 2000, since 2004? Nine years. Might have life. Has a lot of water. Okay, let's not take a photograph of it for nine years. That is weird. It appears to be differentiated into a rocky core and icy mantle and may harbor an ocean of liquid and water underneath its surface. We've got some alternative names for series. In 1943, it was called X-13, which is weird. The classification of series has changed more than once and has been the subject of disagreement. Ceres was given a planetary symbol and listed in such astronomy books for a half of a century. And then somehow, just like Pluto got demoted, earlier before, Ceres got demoted. So it's like Ceres got demoted and then Pluto got demoted and then Ceres got promoted to dwarf planet, I think, in 2006. That's some crazy crap, man. NASA continues to refer to Ceres as an asteroid. But it is kind of like, a, it, they, it's also been called a minor planet, a small solar system body, a dwarf planet. Here's the weirdest thing. A, it doesn't look like just a giant rock like Vesta does. It has strange colors. There's a bright spot on it that is uncertain. And what I think is the weirdest, weirdest, weirdest thing is we haven't gotten any new data on this thing. We haven't gotten any new pictures since 2004. Do you think we were waiting a long time for Ison to get new stuff? We haven't gotten new photos on this thing for nine years. Why do you think that is? Why would they not show us new photographs with the Magic Hubble? I mean, I'm sure they have a series filter to where their photographic ability would have improved, right? Like, they could have take a better photograph than nine years ago, 2004. That's really weird. It's estimated the mantle has 200 million cubic kilometers of water, which is more than the fresh water on Earth. And what comes along with fresh water? Life. The series may have an atmosphere. It's got a ton of water, maybe atmosphere. They think it's a surviving protoplanet. <laughs> Part one of series. Series the series. All right, yeah, this is gonna be the series the series. The series is a newfound magical mystery that I have stumbled upon, you know, and I'm creeped out. Why haven't we got a new photograph since like 2004? That is weird. I mean, that is 
like, what the heck? Okay, so it may have life. It's got a ton of water and atmosphere. It's named after the goddess of nature and environment. And they won't show us any new pictures for nine years. It's it's a new planet in our solar system. I mean, it's we get great photos of Mars. We get great photos of Jupiter. But somehow we can't get great photos of this. We can't even get improved photographs. I'm not even making a lot of jokes because this is seriously creepy and weird. I mean, like, whoa, what the F? Hey, hey I know that the dawn satellite spacecraft is going to Ceres and will be there in 2015. But that does not explain why we've had a nine-year drought of information. And I am very excited to hear NASA or all the super science guys who scoff at my pseudoscience ship to answer that question. Like, what? Why can't you put a ca camera on it, man? What is y'all's problem? Like, this is just too weird. So, uh, okay. There, you know, looks like I got another hot potato on my hands. Didn't Boo say something about holding hot potatoes? I think he said one potato, two potato, three potato more. No, I don't think Boo said that. Kick ass. So, yeah, what the hell, man? All right. Well, I guess it's fun watching Thor news even for me. I hope I stay alive, though. I mean, no, I can't wait. Science guys, tell me why haven't we gotten a good looks at this thing? <laughs> you know, feel like I'm just repeating the old crap. But, hey, this is, this is apropos for this situation, buddy. Okay, great.